The year is 2007, and it's winter holiday. I am playing Nintendo DS on the couch while blasting Disney Channel on an obscure level for a 10 year old. Life is treating me well. Shows like Wizards of Waverly Place, Hannah Montana, Zack and Cody, Phineas and Ferb, and American Dragon was constantly playing from 7am to 9pm. It was during this time that Disney Channel created their biggest success story of their entire existence. A few years prior, David Rinsler and Mark Warren, two producers and screenwriters, pitched an idea to Disney. An idea of a girl who sometimes gets episodic visions and can see things that will happen in the future. The show's name was That's So Raven. See, meta names were something really cool and powerful back in the day. Meta? Yeah. So I hate meta. The show became a success and carved the way for sitcom like shows like these for the next 10 years. However, Mark and David Rissler's creative minds had just started. Something had awakened inside of them. The Rissler had studied arts abroad and was working at a manga studio in his earlier years. He even played a crucial part in the making of uh, Cowboy Bebop. It was during this time he actually started creating manga of his own and an early draft of That's a Raven was created. By bringing the knowledge he gathered from earlier, he managed to do something that no one at Disney had ever dreamt of doing before. He created an anime. I'm talking, of course, about no other than Cory in the house. Cory in the house truly is something special. It's not only the one and only anime that was created by Disney, but it also serves as a spin-off to That's a Raven. As you may know, Cory in the house was originally an unpublished seinen manga created by David Rister. Seinen are often targeting the ages of 18 plus, and this was of course not ideal for a company as Disney, and especially Disney Channel. However, due to the massive success that That's So Raven brought, Disney were willing to take the risk. So, just, just short about the plot if you didn't know, Cory is the younger brother of Raven, and their dad lands a job in the White House as a chef. He decides to bring his heir to his legacy, Cory, with him to live and learn while he works. Cory discovers the power that lies deep within his family blood and faces a bunch of moral dilemmas throughout his journey. The way they depicted Cory in That's a Raven was an annoying little bro who often served as the main antagonist of the series. By making a series around this antagonist was a bold move and something that we weren't used to back then. So we as the viewers also had to face the dilemma of, am I supposed to root for this guy or no? A good example of this is in the second episode, Ain't Miss Bahavian. Bahavian ambassador Rome Parum, who is Nina's father, discovered that his daughter isn't following traditional Bahavian ways by changing out of Bahavian costumes and playing music with Newt and Cory. So he forbids her from speaking to Cory and Newt. Cory, of course, takes the matters into his own hands and slays Rome Parum with his famous sword Ryu, which ultimately sets Nina free from her father's evil grasp. Cory, who believes he did the right thing, then gets confused by a crying Nina who states that she never wants to see Cory's face again and demands him to leave the place at once. This is a perfect example of how conflicted Cory and the world he lives in really is. And of course, me seeing this as a kid inspired me to go out there and actually do something with my life. In the series' first year of airing on Disney Channel, Channel, Cory in the White House generated roughly $180 million, and this is only on its own. It quickly became the most anticipated show of all time. The second season of Cory in the House broke all kinds of records, and with arguably the greatest finale of all time, became known forever in TV history. The depression that people felt after the show was over is the only known factor to why the financial crisis 2008 took its place. 
that on its own is pretty unique. Cory in the House, of course, also the main inspiration to shows like Attack on Titans, Stranger Things, Hunter x Hunter, Planet Earth 2, Better Call Saul, just to name a few. If you haven't seen Cory in the House yet, I definitely recommend it. For me personally, I regard it as one of the top three shows created of all time. Even the manga is really, really, really good. It can get a little bit dark at times, so be prepared for that if you want to read it. But other than that, it's it's amazing. Can't recommend it enough.